Welcome. In this video, I'll be demonstrating the Risa Tecla Link version 4.0. In version 4.0, we added vertical braces. So what you can see here in this example model is I have a lot of different connections, but I'm focusing here on our vertical brace connections. If I zoom in a little bit, you can see I have HSS connections with knife plates. I've got uh, WT shapes for my braces as well as single angles. So in Tecla, once you assign your connections, you have a choice between a 59 connection and a 60. And I'll double click here on this connection. We can just see how the connection lays out. You can define a, all of your geometry here listed. Um, you tell the program exactly what you want for your shape of your gusset plates, how the connection will be uh, attached there with the brace. Uh, the other piece that will be important when you take Teresa connection is the value for the design value here for tension. So I'm going to tell the program here 50 kips that are going to be transferring directly from that brace into the connection. And I'm going to say OK. And if I zoom in here to another connection, you can see the similar things that you lay out, the exact same type of information. Uh, you lay out all the gusset. This one here is going to be a 60 connection. Um, and it's a wraparound gusset cross. And we have here in this one 40 kips for this plate and for this uh, brace. So what we'll do, uh, you also, before you go over to Risa Connection, you also want to define how that beam attaches to the column. In this case here, I have a clip angle. And if I double click on that clip angle here, it'll give us the same type of geometry information on for the clip angle connection type 141. You can define the parameters of the shape and, and the size of that clip angle. Uh, you can also go ahead and look at the design type. This will be where we tell the program how much shear is going to be transferred from that beam into the column. So I see this one says 10 kips. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit and once you've installed the, the Risa Tecla link, what you'll see here, you have three buttons at the top of your screen. Uh, the three buttons here, if I click on the sign Risa connection and click on any of these connections, it'll give us an echo here of what type of connection this is. So it's a vertical brace diagonal connection. Um, if by any chance I don't want to send this connection to Risa connection, I can check the do not export. But we would, for our example here, we want to send them all. And the next thing I want to do is say design Risa connections. Now this button will launch Risa connection behind the scenes. It will also launch what is, is this is a summary sheet of all the different connections. It's going ahead and assigning a number to all the connections going throughout the entire model. So in this model we don't we have not just only vertical braces, we have clip angles and moment connections, uh, splices throughout. So we see a list there, and we'll come back to that list, but it also pops open Risa Connection. Um, in Risa Connection, we see of all the different types of connections, so some splices in both the, the beams and the columns. We see the uh, clip angle connections, we see some uh, flange mo plate moment connections, we see the ones we're interested in here are going to be the vertical brace connections. Now, each one of these is a grouping, so this is just one type of group and there's lots of connections within. If we click on the vertical brace diagonal connection, it will open up a fan all the different types of individual connections in this group. Um, so for our group, what I'll first do before I even get started is run the analysis on all of this group. So if I say solve all connections, I can see here on the project summary, it tells me what happened if they passed or failed. So all of my connections are passing, and I can see that in the pass in parentheses, and the unity check, or the code check listed, is all under 1, which is meaning that it's passing. I actually have one that's very right at 1, so let's take a look at that one, 604. So I can click on connection 604, and I open it up, and it gives me a three-dimensional view. I can zoom around a little bit and review the type of three-dimensional connection that I've got. I can go to the two-dimensional view. Now the two-dimensional view gives me the ability to see all the dimensions that are here on this model. Um, so if we click on those dimensions, these are live dimensions, you'll see they'll highlight on the right side of my screen wherever I click on a dimension. There's a highlight over here on the right side showing me that where I can adjust that dimension. So I can either dimension adjust it here on the picture or here on my connection properties. You've got the side view, you can see you have a front view, a top view, and a bottom view. And this just gives you the ability to get make changes to all the different pieces of this connection. 
Now, beyond just the view, you have what's on the left side called a reports. If I click reports, it opens up a screen, a summary screen, of all the different code checks that the program went through. Now, these are the controlling limit states for the different pieces of this connection. You'll see beam to column, top gusset to beam, so we're breaking it down into each different piece and each different check. It uh, looks like bolt shear was a big piece here from almost all of this connection. The .97, which is the highest code check I've got, is listed here under top gusset slash beam connection. So to find out more about what happened during that check here, what we can do is on the top of our screen, we've got a top gusset to beam tab, and I just click on that and then I can see all of the different code checks that happen on this entire portion of the connection. And we see as we scroll down that the highest one, that .97, was listed under bolt shear at the plate. And I can click on that one more time and it expands to give me the equation, it gives me the code reference for this equation, and then it gives me all the parameters of that equation. And the values are listed here with some description. So it, it gives you a full view of what's happening inside of this code, this calculation. Now any one of these calculations can be expanded that way. So just clicking on them will start to expand them and tell you a little bit more about what happened. You'll also note that we check the geometry. So there's going to be, these won't be associated with a code check, but they will go ahead and tell you whether you're passed or failed. For example, minimum edge distance, and that's going to be happening in the beam as well as the plate, and, and so on. So you'll see. Now you can do things like expand them all, so all of the connection information. Otherwise, that can get a little overwhelming, so you might want to just collapse them all and only expand the ones you might be interested in. So we see that connection here, information for this is the worst case one. But you can also go ahead and maybe look at one that's a little less loaded. So let's go over here to this connection here. We see uh, 611. So it's only got a .1 code check, which is pretty small. And we can go to the reports and see what it looks like. We're really just completely zeros in most things. Only really the beam to column connection is doing much. So what we could do is we could go back to our two-dimensional view and maybe by chance if they see that this has got four bolts that might be excessive. So what we could do is go and change that to be instead of four bolts we can say it'll be two bolts. And maybe we can check to see if that works. Once we've cleared any of the results and cleared the geometry, you'll notice that there's no code check listed and we have to check this connection one more time. It's still really lightly loaded, which is fine, but we at least will say two bolts is kind of a minimum and that's where we'll stay. Now, any changes you make here into the geometry, the, the thickness of the plate, the different, all of the uh, parameters for the dimensions, um, any of those changes will be brought to Tecla. So all you have to do once you're here and you finish making all of your changes is you can save the model and then you can use this button here that says export connection results to Tecla. By clicking that, Tecla will here will be in the background, will light up and you can see it's going through all the different connections and it's updating them as we go. And then we see from the, in the background here in Tecla, we're going to be going ahead and adjusting all of those different connection parameters. Um, so you'll, it's going to be giving us a list and we'll shortly see how all of those connections are going to be are we're going to be updated. The other piece you can see in this summary sheet is the code check. So it's really helpful as a summary sheet. So if we look at this vertical brace, it tells us just a one-off pass or fail. If they, we click on any of these connections, if there were any errors or warnings, we could see what the program might be suggesting. And all of these are going to be slight warnings. If there's anything that means that there's an error that the program can't get past, you would see that in red. But here, this just gives us a nice summary of what might be uh, something to take a look at for typically for just geometry reasons. So what I'm going to do is close that and I can then see if I go back to my model here any of the changes that have been updated. So we were looking at there, that's our connection here where the two bolts uh, went from, was four bolts and it went down to two bolts. Thank you so much for your time today and feel free to contact Risa at, at info at for further questions.